And we are sticking with cricket on the Sportsmax Zone after a decade-long wait. The Kolkata Knight Riders team of West Indian players Andre Russell and Sunil Narayan are Indian Premier League champions again following an eight-wicket uh, victory over the Sunrisers Hyderabad in Sunday's final. Here is Gerard morris -Seely with a recap. With the most scores over 200 this season, Sunrisers Hyderabad have been able to count on their batting as a main weapon. But it all came crashing down in Sunday's final against the rampant Knight Riders bowling attack. Mitchell Stark, the player of the match, took two wickets to have them in early panic. Matters got increasingly worse as Sunrisers slumped to 7 for 77. West Indian Andre Russell removing Abdul Samad for his second wicket of the night. Sunil Narayan only got one wicket but was economical, conceding just 16 runs. Skipper Pat Cummins tried to counter-attack with a top score of 24 of 19 deliveries. But he fell to Russell who finished with 3 for 19 as Sunrisers Hyderabad were dismissed for 113, their worst performance with the bat this tournament. These Sunrisers needed early wickets to stand any chance of toppling KKR and they got one. Narayan dismissed for six, caught by Shabazz Ahmed off the bowling of Cummins. But their hopes were quickly snatched by Ramanullah Gurbaz and Venkatesh Aye. The pair combined for 91 in 45 deliveries with Aye being the aggressor. He smashed 52 off 26 deliveries included four fours and three sixes. Gurbaz managed 39 in 32 deliveries before he was dismissed in the ninth over. But in the end, there was no stop in KKR, reaching 114 for 2 in 10.3 overs to win by 8 wickets and secure their third IPL title and first in And 10 it's years. a purple wave that descends at Chepok. Third title for KKR. Shreya Sarai Ren has been a cock a hoop. It's been a fantastic performance. You, know, you, you hope you get a few boundaries away and you, you're into the game, but they bowled fantastically well. Didn't really give us anything. And um, it was similar, you know, last week in Ahmedabad, they bowled really well. So, yeah, full credit. Uh, I don't have the words to explain right now. Um, you know, it, it, means, it means so much. I think, um, you know, with all the fans that have been supporting us, you know, right throughout the start of the season, and, you know, we as the players who you know, go out game after game and make sure that we, we get the job done. And it's the first we're actually celebrating, you know, a victory. And I think it's the right moment. And I'm, and I'm happy that all of us were, were very disciplined and just want the same goal. Nikhil Uttam Chandani is still with us to discuss the impact of the West Indies veteran duo in uh, the Knight Riders uh, title run. And uh, Nikhil, a, a surprisingly lopsided result here in this final on Sunday. Uh, winning with 57 balls to spare, a result was, was hard to predict, wasn't it? Yeah, I just want to say, Lance, um, to Maria and Ricardo, the prediction king is still here. Uh, still better than the football predictor, the cricket predictor reigns supreme. I said KKR would win the tournament, and what happened? Anyways, yeah, no, to be honest, didn't. Lance, no, you Mariah, didn't. Mariah, please talk to this guy. Mariah, talk to this guy. Please no, 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 talk no, no, to no. this guy. You, you, <laughs> you said KKR and Sunrisers would get to the final, and Sunrisers would turn the tables no, no, on no, KKR. No, 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 no. Go back to the tapes. No, you know what? No, no. It's okay. Anyways. We'll find the tape tomorrow. No, we'll, we'll, no. we'll play it tomorrow. Don't worry. It's it's okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. This guy, wow. No, I, no wonder your nickname is what it is. You know. but anyways. Or, 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 ah. Nikhil, Nikhil, even if you predicted KKR winning, <laughs> you certainly would have predicted them winning with 57 balls to spare. Yeah, no, it was very one-sided, yes, yes. Uh, To be honest, I was quite surprised by the decision at the toss. And look, this is something that Pat Cummins has subscribed to throughout the season. This brand of cricket, we've all seen them bat first. We've seen them get 270, 250 consistently. They try to sort of strike that first punch and take teams out of the game in that first six overs. But what they ran into was very conducive bowling conditions, I would say. And when you have someone like a Mitchell Starr, as poor of a season as he's had, what he did in the playoffs, I think, was worth every penny of that price tag. Three wickets in the qualifier against Sunrisers, and then two for 14 in the power play. That was the ball of the tournament for me. But so you maximize sort of the swing on offer. I think this bowling attack was the best in the tournament. It's ironic that to all of the sixes and fours and big scores, the best bowling attack ends up winning the tournament. 
the, they took the most spin wickets with Narayana Chakravati. And I think their local seamers chipped in massively, not only in the final, but throughout the tournament. Yeah, and we want to talk a bit about the West Indians in the IPL and uh, obviously Narayan and Russell's uh, part that they played in the Kolkata Knight Riders winning. But overall, looking on to the tournament, you look at someone like Mitch Stark, who struggled throughout long periods in this tournament, but uh, came good at the right time, didn't he? For, well, as I guess as a, as a, a bright spot for the Aussies as they look forward to the T20 World Cup. I think it, first of all, tells you how strong KKR's sort of local core was, support around him, because that was like a third of their budget put in start. And he went at 11 runs and over. Yes, he got 17 wickets, but there were periods throughout the season where he was really struggling. And they had to rely on a harsh hit runner, who I think was the young player of the season for me. Um, and Vaibhav Aurora as well. The two of them took 30 wickets. Before this season, no KKR seamer, if you look at last year, local seamer that is, had taken more than seven. So I think that was a huge improvement for them. And even though Stark was struggling early, they had those guys sort of picking up the slap. But I, I think, as you mentioned, with that left arm angle, what he did under pressure in two very important games in the playoffs, it's probably at the great time for the Australians coming into a World Cup that he's sort of finding form at this time. But when the ball is swinging, and I fear for those early morning starts, I fear for those 8.30 matches at night in the Caribbean, because with that win factor, Mitchell's start will be a handful in the Caribbean, uh, especially when he's on. And he was very much on in that final. Yeah, and it will be very, very exciting to watch. Nikhil can't wait for the T20 World Cup, of course, to bowl off. But that aside, you know, I felt as if we didn't do justice to the KKR captain. We didn't spend enough time talking about him, Shreyas Ayer, I'm talking about. And just the way in which, you know, he went about his business as the skipper. So your assessment of that, because in his post-match interview, he described his team like the Invincibles. And he was very clear to say that, you know, it was a cumulative effort. And I think... Personally, this has been one of the most balanced teams throughout the tournament. They've been brilliant with both bat and ball. Yeah, not only that, Mario, I think to dominate for the entirety of the season, they were, I think, in the top two for three quarters of the season. And not only that, to then follow up and replicate in the playoffs, you win that first game. They always say you win that first qualifier or you spend four or five days off. It can get to you as a team. But just such a clinical performance, I think... The addition, obviously, of Ayo over the last couple of years has been a good one. Even from his days at Delhi with leadership, he always seems to thrive, has his sort of own philosophies. But the big difference for me this year was Gotham Gambier, someone who has played for his KKR franchise. He's obviously sort of represented them in their glory days, helping them win titles. But what he was able to extract out of guys like someone like Antonio Narayan, who opened the batting alongside Gambier at his most successful times. And you look at the last three seasons, Narayan barely even averaged 10 with bat in hand. To score 480 runs this year, I think it was all Gambier. Just trusting him, believing in him, backing him no matter what. And because of that, KKR virtually played every game with two impact players because you have an extra bat in the ring who is also one of the best, if not the best bowler in the IPL. So amazing luxury to have, but the leadership deserve a lot of credit for the philosophy, but also the work that they've done in the last two years to build this team to what it is now. Yeah, Narayan, of course, now leading with the MVP awards are concerned because he's won it three times, of course, um, won more than his uh, fellow Quindies player. I can't even say that for Narayan anymore because he doesn't play for the West Indies anymore. But you know what I mean, of course, Andre Russell with two of those MVP awards. A quick word, though, because this really stood out for me, Andre Russell talking about the fact that, you know, what the IPL franchise KKR has done for him is has been really really helpful especially because you know andre russell has struggled with injuries for quite some time and i think just the fact that he felt it so necessary to mention that is important yeah you saw the raw emotion um with obviously the tears at the end there he's been through a lot russell but i remember years ago when he had that injury a bad injury and he was out of cricket for a while it was kkr they were the franchise who took him flew him to dallas he got sort of remedial work. He got, I think it was a surgery done. And I think they've always believed in their players. And Russell and Narayan play in six franchises for them around the world. ILT20, Major League in the States, obviously CPL here in the Caribbean and, and the IPL. So I think just that trust, that belief into these two guys has paid off massively. Last year, they could have easily, after the season Russell had, he was expensive with ball in hand, constantly injured in and out of the team. They could have easily said we'll go another direction. Russell, obviously, over 30 years old now, could have easily said we'll try to go somewhere younger. 
but they showed sort of the belief in his ability and his skills. And the bowling this season, to average a wicket every nine deliveries, that sort of impact, we can't sort of go, it can't sort of go unnoticed because I think what he did throughout phases of the innings, but specifically in the last five overs, changed a lot of games in this IPL for them. So he deserves credit. Yeah, he certainly does deserve credit. And I know you mentioned earlier that Andre Russell and you would have much preferred to see him in a high-intensity final like the IPL. Um, and he's gotten that experience and he'll get right into a high-intensity World Cup campaign. Um, but there is another way of looking at it, Nikhil, because Andre Russell is 36 years old. I know he says that he is in the shape of his life. He's coming off his best IPL ever, 19 wickets, 222 runs. It was fantastic. But can he last another six weeks of high-intensity cricket? Yes, he can, Ricardo. Age is just a number, you know. Um, uh -huh. Imran Tahir, 44 years that. old, winning the CPL. I think, listen, anything is possible. I must say, though, there, I, I even talking to some of the KKR personnel after the tournament, the analysts, etc. He's seen Russell for the last decade, um, and many people are saying that this is the fittest they've ever seen Andrew Russell. And I think back to 2016, where he was sort of acrobatic, flying all over the place in the field. He didn't really go, I didn't see him go off the field much. He wanted to be involved. It wasn't used as an impact sub because of his importance with ball in hand. So ever since that England series, when they won last year, and, and Russell played a big part in the last game to win the series, he said these words. He said, when the World Cup comes around, I'm going to look like a UFC fighter. And you go on his social media, 4 a.m. he's in the gym. 5 a.m. he's in the gym. There seems to be like he has a point to prove. Like, look, even though I'm 36 years old, I have a lot to give in, in not only West Indies cricket, but in world cricket. And I think this IPL, even probably the Australia series where he got runs and was powerful um, earlier this year, he had a very good ILT20 in Abu Dhabi. I just think what he's done this year, and it's not just a one-off, the ability to achieve this across series, across tournaments, tells you that there's a different newfound hunger and anything is possible. Y'all Jamaicans eat very good food and you're very strong people. <laughs> I wonder if you were told to say that. Um, by the way, I used to see those um, Andre Russell workouts on his WhatsApp status. I don't see them anymore. I'm not sure what that means. Um, but yeah. Means wow. Back. Not all of us have his number, you know. Not all of us have no, his WhatsApp. No, um, it might be the kill that he said something and he's blocked. I doubt it. Well, at least he had. At least he had the number in the first place, you know. Maria, we have. To, I'm, I'm a small fish, so I don't have Andre Russell's number. But Ricardo, you know. Uh, we don't expect anything less. <laughs> Can we go to break? Please. Thank you, Nikhil. As always, we'll talk again soon. Prediction King is here. Remember, KKR, I said it. So. Nik Nikhil, just Tell have a me. good day, bro. Just have a good day. Let's go to break. Please. Please. <laughs> <laughs>